Ike for flouting Ghana Education Service Directive on admissions. Also this afternoon, we explore Speaker of Parliament's proposal for stricter measures to address lateness to the House among MPs. And much later in sports, Mediema in contention for CAF Champions League quarterfinal qualification. We have details of these and some other stories coming your way shortly. Please do stay with us. Let's begin with education because headmasters in seven senior high schools in Ashanti region have been asked to step aside for collecting unauthorized monies from candidates placed in their schools. This is contained in directives issued by the Ghana Education Service to these teachers via separate letters. This comes on the back of the head teachers of O'Reilly Senior High School and Ghana Senior High School who were also interdicted by the Ghana Education Service over alleged unauthorized activities. The headmistress of O'Reilly Senior High School, Nadia Latecho Anan, has been directed to step aside pending an investigation into the unauthorized collection of money as part of the admission process, while the headmistress of Ghana Senior High School, Patience Naki Mensa, has also been asked to step aside with effects from December 7 for similar reasons. This is Weekend Central on TV3. We are also live on DSTV channel 279. Gordon, so this is an issue that is coming up from mm. the free senior high school policy as well as the education sector in general. Yeah. It should be worrying, isn't it? Very disturbing. I mean, recently, the conversations around senior high schools and the time that it was reopened for freshers was really disturbing. So having such developments also in the senior high school sector really goes to tell that there are a lot of challenges that are supposed to be resolved but i understand abu bakar is online yes ibrahim is joining us from the ashanti region where most of these schools are found ibrahim thank you for joining us this afternoon update us on the senior high schools in the ashanti region who sets have been asked to step aside for charging these unapproved fees ibrahim can you hear me Yes, I can, Grace. Great. So I was asking you to update us on these schools or the headmasters who have been asked to step aside for collecting unauthorized fees. Okay, so in Ashanti region, um, seven headmasters have currently been asked to uh, step aside for investigation to go on on some alleged collection of unauthorized money. And these headmasters include um, schools like um, Kumasi Secondary Technical High, that's KSTS. Then we have Kumasi Girls Senior High School. Uh, we have Colin Senior High School um, around Agogo, Asante, Achim North. Then we have Agrek in Dima Community Day Senior High School at um, Kwada. So then we have New um, Mansue Dubia Senior High School at um, Amantia South. Um, we also have um, um, KSTS, which is in Kumasi. So we have seven of these senior high schools. And um, this unauthorized collection of fees um, included um, sale of anniversary clause, sale of calculator, um, payment of house dues, and also SRC dues. But we know that um, this year, the Ghana Education Service has issued a directive that they have come out with a uniform and standardized um, prospectus. Um, Previously, every school has its own prospector. prospector. So, um, school A can buy, let's say, 20 items. School B mm. can buy 30. School C can buy less. But this year, GA decided that in order to bring relief to parents, they are making a standard. So, every school will comply with this setting of items that the um, students will require. And in fact, 
Um, in the early days, you know, that's when the four point parents started going. Most of them were excited that the number of items they were buying this year on the prospectors is a bit low. So it has kind of um, cut down on the cost that they were thinking that they would care. Okay. So they were happy only to get to the school and be told that you have to pay. But in one of the schools that I went, there was this man who brought his sword. He said he had to go back to Eastern region. They came all the way from Eastern region because he had been told to pay admission fee 200 cities mm. um, anniversary cloth. So in all, he was paying around 1,500 in addition to the prospectors that he bought. So mm. um, it was a worrying development to parents, and I think this report got to GES, and they and decided they to act on it. So um, for now, all these seven headmasters have been asked to step up step aside. The regional education director will now take charge of these schools until the investigations are concluded for them to know the next line of action. In fact, I engaged with one parent, that was on Monday, mm. who was also not happy that he has to pay some money aside the prospectors that he bought. Okay. Ibrahim, thank you for, so much for that detailed explanation. We know GES is already taking action and we'll be looking forward to what comes out of it. Talking about GES, the PRO of the GES, Cassandra Chum, has been speaking to us on the action taken by her outfit. And so these um, heard from the Ashanti and then Bono add on to what you know, that is Ghana Senior High School and then O'Reilly Senior High School. Now, these heads have or were charging unapproved monies. Some were also selling unauthorized items, which we believe is against our administrative directive. Prior to the release of placements, our Director General had an extensive engagement with all heads of second cycle institutions and the GES, we told them not to be selling and not to be charging any money that hasn't been approved. Just imagine a head teacher or a headmaster charging 300 cities for the issuance of national health insurance to complete admission process. I do not even think that at the national health insurance office, one would have to pay that even amount of money. There were those that were selling tax seals. Some are even selling admission form. Why should that be? And so for us, we've asked them, once we have established and they've confirmed that, yes, these monies were charged and the items that um, we have identified were also being sold on campuses, we've asked them to step aside for further investigations to continue. And that is the reason why they are to appear before the disciplinary, regional disciplinary committee. And so definitely we are giving them that fair hearing. But you know, before you are asked to step aside, then first a prima facie should have been um, or must have been um, established and that's exactly what happened in our case. If you have a particular reason why there's a need for uh, uh, your school or your students to buy something, then definitely we have to know. And in certain situations, it's the PA that takes charge. Let's go along on this and speak to former Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Charles Ayatochega, who has joined us on Zoom. So, Chika, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon to you too. So, as a former DG of the Ghana Education Service, how does this step by the GES come to you? Well, I, it, it reminds me that we haven't gone very far in resolving the controversies that are inherent in the implementation of the free SHS. Mm. And um, this would have been a very good time to be able to come to some good consensus and ensuring that we can take the program um, to uh, an, another level. Mm. What would you recommend that we do, since you're saying we haven't gone too far in resolving the issues that come with the implementation of the policy? Well, there are a number of sites which come uh, to view. One, um, headmasters would have to begin to realize that um, the ministry has set certain specific directives and it is their responsibility to go by those directions that the ministry has, has given to all, all of them. And uh, it is also very important, maybe in very specific cases, where the need arises to be able to ensure that if these decisions are 
then this must be made clear to the authorities so that um, some agreements therefore can be reached in terms of ensuring that the children can go to school in a very comfortable uh, state. And for the other issue that comes up is that this is time for uh, the ministry also to realize that mm. um, for this number of years that we have started with the free SHS, certain new developments have come and it's important to fuck those into the implementation of this new system or else we would have a breakdown of a system when some of these things uh, do not work. Tachaga, so um, before I let you go, the GES has begun investigations into the issues. How soon should we be expecting the results to come out so um, it serves as a deterrent to other headmasters or school heads who might be thinking of doing the same thing? Well, I would say as soon as possible, but this is not a matter that can be addressed very quickly. Mm. I think the GES must sufficiently take time to try and understand every case because not uh, all the schools are the same. Mm. So it's important to look at all the dimensions that are involved in this and ensure that we reach an amicable solution that will not jeopardize uh, the careers and then the, the children who are going to the schools and allow the free SHS to continue to drive as we want it to be. Mr. Haeto, thank you for speaking to us. Charles Chega Haeto is former Director General of the Ghana Education Service, the Executive Director of the Institute for Education Studies, IFES, Dr. Peter Anti, is also joining us for a conversation on this doc. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Will you say this move by the Ghana Education Service is in the right direction? I thank you very much and good afternoon. Yes, I think it's in the right direction. Um, I think that um, we were informed of a harmonized prospectus and the, the, the schools were given specific directives. So ideally, if your employer says that you should come to work at eight and leave at four, you do that. It doesn't matter the reasons that you have. If you think that you have specific reasons that needs, uh, that leads to you taking certain decisions, you go back to the employer and communicate that decision to them. So I think that it's in the right direction. They, they think that they give certain directives and these head uh, head heads have uh, violated these directives. I need to add that it does not matter the genuineness or the urgent nature of the, of the needs that the, the headmasters have or the headmistresses have that has resulted in them uh, taking this decision. So far as they did not, they did not run these with the relevant authorities, mm -hmm. I think the decision by the GES is in the right direction. Doc, we know the heads of these schools have an idea of what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Why do we keep having these issues coming up? What should we do so that this probably becomes the last time it is happening? Yeah, so I, I need to make this point that I don't know the extent to which us was involved in the development of this harmonized prospectus. I do not know. And I think that at this stage, looking at the number of heads that are, uh, that are being interdicted, mm. I think that it is time that Charles steps in. Okay. You see, Charles will have an idea, the uniqueness of various schools as uh, being uh, managed by, by them. And therefore, if there is a need to make a specific case for specific schools. I think that these things should be run through charts. Again, GES should understand that each individual headmaster would want to write to them before they charge some of these things. It's going to create certain some, some kind of chaos because look at the, the number of heads that are being interdicted. So I think that when Charles steps in and then Charles negotiates or uh, have a conversation with the management of the Ghana Education Service, there could be a specific a uh, roadmap that is drawn that will enable headmasters um, charge or, or do what they think their school needs, which is peculiar to the various schools. I think that is, that is the best that we can do now. So at this stage, we want to uh, encourage Charles to step in and then start speaking for the headmasters. And if possible, um, call for a meeting between the management of the Ghana Education Service mm -hmm. and the headmasters, I mean the leadership of Charles, so that they can streamline some of these things. Because I can tell you that some of these cases, they are genuine cases that headmasters would want to help. But because they are not following the rules and regulations and, uh, given to them by uh, the Ghana Education Service, that's why they find themselves in this particular situation. Yeah. I would want to urge headmasters that, look, you might have genuine cases, you might have genuine interest in helping students have comfort, be comfortable when they come to your school. But hey, that is the rule of GES. 
So it doesn't matter what you think or how, how you feel or whatever your strategy is. Just respect, respect the rule of GES and then let all have the peace. Because being interdicted and all that, the, 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 your name in the media, being accused of collecting money and other things, it's, it's, it's something that is going to be a toll on you, okay. on your family and those who are associated with you. All right, so, so just follow the rule of Ghana Education Service and, and then let's see how it goes. Sure. Thank you for speaking to us, Dr. Peter Pantes, Executive Director of the Institute for Education Studies. Gordon, the issues keep coming back to us year in, year out. Yeah. I mean, you have been exploring and speaking to those who are actually facing the challenges, yes. parents in that particular matter. So since the introduction of the school placement selection system, parents and guardians have thronged the various solution centers to resolve the challenges with the awards placement. Well, Grace Hamwajiman and Frederick Kulzoti Ani tell the story of women at the forefront of securing schools for the awards, including 53-year-old visually impaired Auntie Millicent, who will not relent until her child is rightly placed. It's 10 a.m. here at the school placement center at the Nath Hall in Accra. Mothers, aunties, sisters, and even grandparents are here to resolve an issue or another. One of such is Auntie Millicent. The 53-year-old visually impaired walks in with the help of her daughter, who wants to change her school placement. We came here this morning because my daughter had Afajatu school, and it's very far. I can't take her there because I have eye problems, and my daughter keeps on crying, so I am here to change the school for her. I asked why she is a companion here, despite her challenge. My husband is dead, and I am the only person taking care of this child without any help. She and her daughter were not successful with their placement and have been asked to return later. I was placed as a Fajato SHS in the Vota region. I came to change the schools, but I've been told to go and that they would call us to come back. The women outnumber the men, so I asked, where are the fathers? My husband is a very busy man, that is why I'm here. I'm here to change the school status of my child from day to boarding. Our husbands have gone out in search of money so we can take care of the children. Baba is 64 and is here with his son for a similar issue. Because all the schools he chose didn't pick him up. So I have to come. So when I came, I spoke to them and they told me yes, I have to write some schools, then I should leave everything for them. In four days' time, they will call me. For Reverend Amwa, also a father, taking up a role in their child's life should be the priority of every parent. Giving your children good education is our responsibility, right? And uh, especially in this time of the world's history. You see, you have to push your son and daughter to school to whatever level that he or she may be able to attain. According to sociologist Dr. Kojovi Akpabli Honu, there's a new trend of mothers now becoming the breadwinners. We have something we call matrifocal families. Families controlled by women. The man may no longer exist, and so the woman becomes everything for the family. And so you look at this instance, it is that woman who will spearhead every thing that should be done for the children. He adds that in the journey of a child's education, the support and encouragement of parents play a vital role. Men must have time for their children because the man comes back from work and then he goes out to meet with his clique, his peers. Uh, we go to beer bars, uh, and, or we go to play draft, and so on. The man must try to unite the children, the wife, to himself, so that the children should see uh, the parent as sharing responsibilities. For Auntie Millicent and the many mothers who besiege these solution centers, they will not relent until the children are satisfied. Grace Hamwa Jiman and Frederick Kuzo Tiani 
TV3 News, Accra. Let's go to Parliament because the Speaker of the House, Alban Bagbing, is proposing that from the first meeting of the fourth session of the eighth Parliament, the chamber will be locked at 10 hours on each sitting day. According to the Speaker, the decision is part of the measures he is adopting to address the issue of late attendance among MPs. Let me take you through what the Speaker has been saying. He says, Honourable Members, those who arrive late will be locked out until the Speaker decides to open the doors again at 100 hours. The doors will be locked. The Speaker will be in and it will take some time before the doors will be opened. And so if you will not be able to comply with it, let us all agree that we will start sitting in the afternoon from 2 hours or 16 hours. The committees will have their meetings in the morning. Reports will be ready for us to consider in the afternoon and then by the time we adjourn around 8 p.m. the traffic situation would have improved. Well, Professor Abdullahi is Senior Advisor at the Africa Parliamentarians Network Against Corruption and he is joining us for a conversation on this. Prof, this proposal by the Speaker to lock the doors to the Chamber at 10 a.m., is it a good one? How are you receiving this? Well, I, I, don't, I think it's desperation. It's not going to work. <laughs> First of all, you have a lot of people involved. If it was a small number of people, I can understand, but... You know, if you have a lot of people involved, it's not going to work. I think the alternative of probably if they can agree to meet in the afternoon would work. Because uh, some of the parliamentarians will tell you that traffic and all that. But I think it all boils down to attitude. And you cannot coerce people to, you know, to, 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 to be able to uh, uh, all, all be in line. Mm. And Prof, what improvement do we see this bring in the work of the legislature? and also ensuring value for money for the MPs paid by the taxpayer. Well, that's why I say it boils down to attitude, because, you know, this is what they, they, they stood for elections for, to, to represent their people in Parliament, but they don't get there on time, or they don't even count at all. So um, you cannot use that cohesive measure to, to, to cure that. It's a, it's a bandage, maybe one or two days, and they go. Mm. Oh. Right, Prof, thank you for speaking to us. Professor Abdullahi is with the Parliamentarians Network Against Corruption. This is Weekend Central on TV3. We're also live on DSTV Channel 279. We have more for you after this break. Stay with us. It's the Light most. Of the city. 2023 is back. It's bigger, longer, and better. Join us and embrace the radius of Ghana and look out for the Light of the Parade experience happening on the 10th December 2023. Be sure to take photos and share. Light up the city 2023. Embrace the radiance of Ghana. Hi, baby. Hi, mom. Hope you're having fun at Granny's. Yeah, but grandma doesn't have my favorite top chocolate chocolate spread. Hi, mom. Mommy, please, I miss top chocolate chocolate spread on bread. Tasty too. Made just for you and me. Top choco, it's chocolate choco. Chocolate choco, it's chocolate choco. Top choco, it's chocolate surprise you drink. Yay! It's chocolate oh, choco. Oh, it's chocolate choco. This advert is FDA approved. How do I look? You look so gorgeous, Auntie. Thank you. I hope my date feels the same. Am I not forgetting something? Yes, obviously. Laura Mimi. Thank you. Can I use the washroom, please? Sure. Flora disposable blanket, if. Oh. 
You obviously are using floral tissues, my dear, because the floral tissues, they are soft and easy on the skin and they leave no particles. I hope you had a good time. I had fun, thank you for dinner. Are you okay? Do you want to use the washroom? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uncle, I will tell Auntie. Ah, Fat Jimmy, I just love how he feels. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch. From your particular, who will be for a point one? Ha! Just an ammy uncle, some improved, unless a problem is womb. It's not my own idea, mammy. Papa, patches and any answer, Katua. I'm quite points, you know, I'm shaming with your mum, maybe be an awesome woman, do mammy do me fine, and my own crammy, you know, for one, I'm quite more. Eba, and everything yourself. My mammy, no, I do, Joe, and the whole wound to me, Nancy. And then you call end point, a moment in Mura, and then the white dear, what's me, I'm sorry, Nancy. That's end point for you. Of our brother, too. Hello. Hey, what's your watch? Okay. A free bra would be point one dancing. I'm a choir, you know. We just say my name, Koye, and pass on my name, and then my Gina Sabema. Now, maybe if you have for the one in the Jarrah, you had everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. I'm going to go. 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 This Sunday on Hot Issues. Why do you think Ghana is so poor? So poor? Ghana is poor, isn't it? No. We are a lower middle income country. It will be um, an untrue yeah. conclusion yeah. to say that Ghana Beyond Aid is ongoing. It's ongoing. We're turning around the corner. What I'm saying is that their experiences are what they are telling us, that yes. life is difficult because we haven't progressed as a country. They're telling you that their children mm. have access to mm. education. Mm. However, the quality of education, they are questioning. No, no. We have the best result in our education trend since independence for secondary education. The best ever. Hot Issues shows Sundays at 2 p.m. on TV3. TV3. Fest in news. We're watching Weekend Central here on TV3. Welcome back. Let's do more stories now. Some 300 displaced residents in the North Tong district of the Volta region are expected to relocate into new houses built for them. It has been more than a month since the spillage of the Akosomo Dam and Pong Dams and that caused flooding in the lower Volta areas of Bato, Ada and Mepe, among others. Let's go on the line and speak to our correspondent, Joseph Armstrong Alogbe. Hello, Armstrong. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Where are you at the moment and what can you report? So currently I'm here at Mepe, at the alternative uh, building project that it was put uh, up by the Honorable MP for the North Thong area, Honorable Okuja to Ablankwa. I'm told so far this morning 300 of them were brought to camp here two months after the flood that swept through the township of Mepe and other parts of the Bota region. This morning, the residents are very happy. They are so excited about the new development that at least they are not going to sleep in the classrooms again as they will be able to get close to their wives and kids as each family has been given a room for themselves. The Honorable MP is standing here with me. Let's find out the arrangements, how long the people are expected to live in this uh, very uh, building. Honorable, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to support us. Yes, and congratulations for doing this within seven weeks, uh, approximately. So, 
how is it going to be like some of the residents I got here were worried. They are asking, uh, are they going to be here forever? For how long are they going to be here? And also, how many of them have you been able to clear? Is the Kisito school free for students to occupy now? Yes, so uh, as you have observed, we are allocating rooms to displace persons. You know that according to that, we are at the FD sector. 12,633 people displaced in North Toronto. Uh, this uh, housing construction, which we did in seven years, and I must thank uh, construction ambassadors who are uh, a subsidiary of uh, the First Sky Group. They helped us. Uh, I just provided me that I am supporting the furnishings and also taking care of the utility bills. Uh, everybody who is allocated a room here will not pay rent, they will not pay utilities, whether water bill or light bill, because they are devastated, they are uh, totally uh, distraught, they have lost everything, they are living in abject uh, squalor now, they don't have, you know, any, any funds to pay for rent and utilities. What this has done is that it has not only restored the dignity of my people who, you know, do not deserve to be living in uh, classrooms like refugees, you know, living in that, uh, you know, uh, in sanitary uh, conditions that really do not meet the standards of human dignity. Now they can have their dignity back. But I am also excited that my person is into uh, senior technical school can now, you know, be free to resume academic work. Already, continuing students have lost seven, eight weeks of academic work. The first year, 800 have been posted, but they have not been able to report because the link was occupied by displaced persons. Um, now, these uh, first year students have returned. So, having relocated the people here, I will be headed to my person to carry out litigation for that painting work so that the school can be prepared uh, uh, so that by Monday the students can return and the academic work uh, will resume. Let me also emphasize that this uh, facility uh, will cater for uh, about 300 people. There are 63 uh, rooms, so it's three units, 21 rooms in each unit. And so an average family of five, uh, so you have at least 300 people who uh, can be nicely housed in this uh, So as of us right now, three of them, 300 of them uh, have been uh, brought here. What happens to the rest that you don't get accommodation here? Have you been able to accommodate the girls who uh, moved back in the uh, maybe township? Yeah, so uh, we did fumigation, day contamination some weeks ago. For those whose houses, according to our structural uh, integrity assessment we did, they could return. If the report was positive, then uh, we will do that fumigation for you. But those whose houses, the experts told us that they could not return. Did you, did you have they, numbers? Like how many yes, of these houses? Uh, yeah, they have about, they have about uh, uh, roughly about, about 90 of those houses and they're declared unsafe. Uh, so, so they have to be pulled so, down. Yes, yeah, they have to be pulled down. And then uh, we also have the other category of people whose houses were totally demolished, uh, totally damaged, yes. totally damaged. That's 1,500, according to that uh, rounded figure. And so for those people, and those are the people we are housing here, and they are the most one. And uh, we must emphasize that this housing project is the first thing we are about to cut short for the second phase. And we are hoping to repeat what we have achieved here in seven weeks. Uh, we will do the second one in Mapa so that we can take another 300. And we will keep doing that. And you asked a question about how long they, they will stay here. They can stay as long as they can until government uh, reconstructs their houses for them. When their houses have been reconstructed and they can move into permanent accommodation, then they can leave and probably will consider turning this place into probably a nursing training school. But for now, they can live here as long as they can until we have the resettlement houses constructed and then until they receive their full compensation for that problem. So, first of all, that is the Honorable MD for the North Town, the Honorable Peter to have like to give us some details as to how the residents are going to be here. So, he has said that they are going to be here as long as they want until government is able to uh, construct a new place for them. But as it stands, I'm going to move to the Kizito school and find out the current situation there and whether or not the students who have been posted here firstly will be able to start school on Monday.
Over to you, Nestor. Because I'm strong. And, I mean, for about a month of battling mosquito bites at night, not being able to feed properly, they do get to live comfortable lives again. And I must really applaud the MP for the constituency for doing such a great work. Away from that, the lithium exploitation lease agreement floated by government has come under extreme criticism as being a quote, colonial style concessionary agreement. Speaking to TV3, Professor Ransford Jampo says international best practices such as joint ventures and service contracts should be better options for Ghana. Professor Ransford Jampo is adamant the current lease agreement should not be an option at all. Our current arrangement and agreement is being influenced by the colonially imposed concessionary arrangement that says that when you come and mine, you would own and give us some. That's what I refer to as farm obi. But you cannot go to somebody's country and mine a lithium and own it and give them tokens. We are talking about a service contract deal. That is, in my view, what is best for Ghana. Come and mine. If you mine, it belongs to us. We pay the cost of your mining plus a profit margin, and then you clear off, you go away. And then we will decide whether we want to refine the lithium before we export, or we want to export it in its raw uh, um, state, whatever we want to do with it. We own it, and then we determine what we want to do with it. And I think that this is what, in my view, should be best for Ghana, not the current colonially imposed um, concessionary arrangements that we are all, you know, we are being made to believe that it, it, it is good for us. That only touts the tokens that we'll be getting and does not talk about what the mining companies, the foreign mining companies are going to be getting. Are you hearing, are you, are you getting information as to how much they are going to get it? That one, nobody talks about it. But former Deputy Attorney General Joseph Pemka is of the view this agreement is a step above previous ones. My position is that the deal may not be the best, but it is better compared to all our previous deals that we've had, mining leases and oil exploration and etc. So my position is very clear and unequivocal on this matter, that I'm urging us to proceed with caution. We deserve the best, but we've got the better. So even if anything, I've urged government to incorporate the views of individuals and corporate bodies as well as distinguished industry players to see if there could be an improvement leading to uh, the process of uh, presenting it to parliament for ratification. Professor Jampo has expressed doubt over Parliament's ability to reach a conclusive lease agreement which will be in the interest of the people of Ghana. I don't trust in the politician of today acting in our interest. So they should not arrogate themselves the right to tell us what is in our interest. They don't even know our interest. We are hearing so many people say, let it go to Parliament. I am saying that this Parliament has a history, this particular Parliament. It has a history of always threatening and yet acting in a manner contrary to the address when it's, it really matters. So I don't even trust Parliament can do anything. But MP for Bongo, Edward Bauer, has defended the position of the minority on this matter. I can speak on behalf of the minority that our intention is to scrutinize the lease. Our intention is to ensure that all the critical issues that need to be raised will be raised. Indeed, you will, you will realize that over six months now, we've been talking about they bringing the lease agreement to Parliament for ratification. The reason is because we want to see the details of it. So our primary objective basically is to look what is the interest of the state, what is the interest of the country, and that is what we'll be advocating for. So, but you cannot uh, fight somebody for his or her opinion or perceptions, but I can tell you that very clearly that uh, for the minority who will stand up for the Ghana and that's what we do. Lithium Limited has been floated by government as one which incorporates new and enhanced terms to ensure that the country benefits optimally from this mineral.
Well, you're still watching Weekend Central here on TV3 with me, Godwin Asidwa, and Grace Hamwajiman. A former Deputy Attorney General, Joseph Pempa Dinduk, is surprised at the level of impunity with which some people engage in vote buying during the parliamentary primary of the New Patriotic Party for the orphan constituencies on Saturday, December 2, 2023, describing it as shocking. He spoke on Key Points program along with some other panelists, including um, Professor Ransford Jampo, lawyer Martin Pigbu, and Edward Bauer, the National Democratic Congress Member of Parliament for Bongo. It's the level of impunity with which some of the things were carried out. You, you share it publicly. Mm. Cameras are capturing what is being done, distribution of money to influence voters and etc. How have we come to this? We set up ourselves mm -hmm. for, 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 for corruption, mm. so to speak. Yeah. Because mm. if you get to parliament and you have to recoup that which you spent and your right. legitimate earning is less than a quarter of what you are supposed to earn legitimately uh, against the backdrop of what you spent in order to become MP, then mm. in order for you to recoup it, you have to cut corners. Yeah. <laughs> you have to mm. engage in dirty deals mm -hmm. and etc. Mm -hmm. to be able to recoup your money. The special prosecutor, as I stated, can come up with. But you see, the other thing that we have as a problem is how you are going to be able to garner the evidence enough to prove your case before mm. court. Remember that if you, if you run there empty-handed, you go home crying. You have to go with concrete evidence to nail people. Right. And if one or two persons are convicted in our jurisprudence, put behind bars, and it serves as some warning or signal that what is happening in our democracy can no longer continue and be tolerated, then I believe that we'll make uh, a very big progress. And this afternoon, the deputy majority leader is fighting back claims that he masterminded the issuance of a mining lease for the extraction of lithium in his constituency. A demonstration early in the week by a pro-NDC youth group pointed to the growing anger of residents of Ifutu demanding a halt to a mining contract in which the sacred Abwache forest has allegedly been given out for lithium mining by the Futu legislator Alexander Penyo Markin says he will at all times protect the natural resources of Ifutu land as long as he remains an MP. He has also called out the NDC for peddling and truth. Don't let the NDC liars to come and deceive you. They have nothing to offer. Their candidate was once upon a time a member of this party. Because he's a liar, we sacked him. We sacked him. Because he's always lying. The man's name is Ababrese. How can an Ababrese offer you something? An Ababrese man has nothing to offer. But with your left smacking, he's a do the do. Do the do. Let me tell the NDC I am not afraid of debates. I am not afraid, afraid to face them any day. I am inviting them for a debate on national issues, on issues about winning by a new future. And I know they're going to run away. They will run away. <laughs> they have nothing to offer us and all they know is propaganda all they know are the lies all they know is just go around and promising what they cannot fulfill so i urge all of you remain united over 5,000 Ghanaians have migrated to Germany as of 2019 with the Interior Ministry alarmed about the trend. A seven-point strategic framework to curb the outflow developed by the Migrants and Skilled Development Front has been presented to the Interior and Defence Committee of Parliament with an urgent call on Parliament to take an action. Emerging events um, such as globalisation, enhanced transportation, political economic inequality and political unrest has further exposed the gaps within migration management in Ghana, for which reason uh, steps need to be taken to avoid waste by coordinating the effort of stakeholders and that of government partners to get those gaps addressed. Um, many a time those who return seek to uh, benefit from various stakeholders, 
which uh, leads to duplication of effort and wastage. So as, as a member of the UN network on migration, we will discuss among ourselves as stakeholders to see how best we can harmonize our activities to impact meaningfully and further get it out there. So we've developed this seven year, five year strategy plan, principally centered around research, capacity building, um, monitoring evaluation, and combating regular migration as the short to medium term approach in addressing migration. You would agree that nobody envisaged uh, the advent of pand uh, the COVID pandemic, but drawing and post event as further um, giving us an indication that there's a, there's, there's a need for us to approach it with a mindset of uh, short to mid term strategies as compared to developing a very longer period strategic plan that would, have, that would be impacted as trend changes. Well, let's talk COP28 because the Swiss government has granted an internationally transferred mitigation outcome credit to the integrated waste recycling and compost facilities of the Jospon group of companies. The landmark signing happened during the COP28 climate summit in Dubai attended by President Akufado and some ministers of state. ITMO is a carbon emissions trading system where countries can purchase or trade carbon credits from other countries. This mechanism not only facilitates the creation of new carbon markets but also contributes to significant global greenhouse gas emissions reductions and are defined under Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. Phase 1 of the Ghana-Switzerland deal will see 4 out of the 38 waste treatment plants belonging to ZoomLion Ghana, a subsidiary of Jospon Group, generate approximately 1.5 million tons of carbon dioxide valued at $20 million from present until 2030. Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Kwekwe Free touted the deal as a right move and a testament of Ghana's resolve to play its part in reducing green gas emissions whilst promoting the Sustainable Development Goals. We were the first country in Africa to have gotten our framework on the Article 6 ready and the second in the world. Now we are the forefront and we are reaping the benefits, the two events. Now this one has come even very far between Switzerland, so we are going to implement various projects and programs and significantly it involves the private sector. That is the real McCoy. Executive Chairman of Jospon Group Dr. Joseph Sian at Japan said the accomplishment reinforces their commitment to sustainable waste management, environmental conservation and international cooperation while paving the way for a greener and cleaner future. Four of our plants have been selected for the first fees. If four of them have been selected, and this four is going on the carbon trading uh, to produce about 1.5 million uh, over uh, tons of uh, carbon uh, dioxide. In totality, it's going to a quantum of about $20 million over a period of um, starting now to 2030. Let's do health related stories now. Emmanuel Degbe Kwashi is seeking more than 52,000 Ghana cities to undergo surgery for treat of his brain tumor. Doctors advise a further delay will worsen his condition. Let's mourn this report. Emmanuel Degbe Kwashi has been battling this condition for almost a year. The tumor has affected his movement, speech, and sight. Doctors advise a prompt surgery to correct the defect. He needs more than 52,000 CDs to undergo the surgery. The surgery is going to take um, approximately 52,400. Um, but there are other expenses that um, we are told that we should be looking forward for, which are not written over here. Uh, that would be uh, different from what has been given to us directly here. His neighbor tells the news team how the condition has made Emmanuel lose everything. Um, he's in the neighborhood and we know him to be a very strong person. He is an electrician that I know. Uh, as it is now, he's lost everything. Uh, he used to have a shop. Uh, yeah, he's lost the shop too. And so he's virtually 
uh, empty as it is now, uh, living in a kiosk. And so we need help um, for him, for the surgery and uh, all the expenses that go with it. You can make your donation in person to the Three Foundation at Media General in Accra. Let's go to the quarters of the PNC because the party is extending another invitation to disgruntled members to resort to the party's internal dispute resolution process. My colleague Crosby, Noble Crosby Annan, is at the meeting and is joining us for more on this. Crosby, tell us a bit more about this meeting by the PNC. Right, great. Thanks for having me. So we know that the 2024 general elections is just around the corner and has respected all political parties that have plans of when it's been to for elections, they're beginning to put in place mechanisms and measures uh, to put themselves in positions that will allow the PNC them and possibly vote for them. The PNC is one of such political parties. And in pursuant uh, to Articles 46 and uh, 51A of the PNC Constitution, uh, the National Executive Committee of the party, uh, they met and addressed some concerns within the party as part of the meeting was resolved the timelines for the PNC's future going into the 2024 elections. I'll talk to you about uh, some of the resolutions that the party has made ahead of the uh, 2024 general elections. The regional executive elections of the party it will be conducted uh, by the end of January. A time frame of, uh, between the 1st and the 5th of January has been slated uh, for this election to be conducted. Well, the PNC says that it will elect its flag bearer by March 24, by the 24th of March, Kenyans will know who the flag bearer of the PNC will be going into the 2024 general elections. That was made known by the general secretary of the party, Janet Nabla, also a policy analyst of the party and the Ashanti regional uh, chairman of the party, addressing the media here at NATO, where some other executives of the party met, also highlighted the need. Uh, for the party to extend invitations to the transferred members uh, to join or return to the party. Case in point, the former flag bearer of the party, also uh, the former chairman of the party, uh, who have now become former members of the party. But the, the policy analyst of the party says that these members are welcome to join the party if these members decide uh, to resort to the use of the internal uh, dispute resolution mechanism within the party, then they'll be welcome in the party, just as all political parties need numbers to win. The party said that they are resolved in their quest to win election 2024 race. It's Noble Crosby and an is my colleague here. So we know that political season is upon us and it is a game of numbers. You don't want to miss out even on one member of the party. So you want everybody to come in. And Godwin, you want everybody to come in now, don't you? <laughs> Uh, I would rather not comment on this, but let's do sports <laughs> now. Midiema remained in contention for a CAF Champions League quarterfinal qualification after a 1 1 draw with Tanzanian side Young Africans on Friday, December 8, 2023, at Babayara Stadium. The Ghanaian champions involved to uh, the summit of Group D with four points apiece with record holders Al Ali, who faced CR. Uh, below Zadat and Algeria later tonight, the move in yellows took the lead on the 27th minute when striker Jonathan Sowa expectedly um, converted a penalty. This was after Derek Forjo and outwitted Dixon Job with his pace controlled um, a weighted pass with his chest inside the box but was brought down. Well, Nuhu Adams joins us for more updates on the back of this. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, what does the draw mean for Midiema moving forward into the competition after um, their first three matches? Uh, can you please unmute yourself, Mr. Nuhu? Um, we cannot hear you here in the studio, so if you can kindly unmute yourself. Yes, can you, if you can hear me, kindly unmute yourself so that we can hear you here in the studio.
Right, so we are having some challenges trying to connect with Nuhun Adams, but we'll definitely be joining him soon for him to throw more light on the back of that so we get to know when and how the matches go on. Well, coach of the side, Evans Adote, left his thoughts on the game and what has been um, the way forward towards the game. Let's have a look at what the story has for us. Four, four, two. They drew against us here. They drew here, two, two, uh, one, one, rather. We can also go and draw there. We can also go and beat them at their own backyard. Football is a game of uncertainty. I'm telling you the truth. Um, don't write us off as I'm speaking. We have the hope that we can also go and cause a surprise there. That is my answer to your questions. Well, let's go back to Zoom and speak to Nuhu Adams. Nuhu, can you hear me now? Hello, Nuhu. Hello, Nuhu Adams. Well, yeah, this is actually um, rather unfortunate that we are able to connect to him. I'm sure he had more insight into the matches and yes. the way forward. Midiama has been performing well since um, the league started. Yeah, and I they've pray been doing bad. Yeah, they continue like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then let's also talk about the absenteeism in Parliament. We know yes, that somewhere on. last year in 2022, in April, um, some 15 MPs were sanctioned and they had to meet their privileges committee. And this is still happening for the upteenth time. There are always reports on that. And that is really, really, really unfortunate. And I understand Nuhu is on phone now. If you can hear me, what does the draw mean for Midiema? moving forward into um, the competition after their first three matches? Well, the, uh, the draw meets um, the damage chances very, very slim. Um, looking at the fact that the next game is away at young Africans in Tanzania. After that, they play against an early at home, which is not a guaranteed win. So, the damage chances are very, very slim now. But you look at how the competition is panning out, you realize if Medema are to do their first right, they can uh, get at least a draw at away, which will bright their chances. But it's, it's not going to be easy. You look at the sort of quality and experience Nyanga showed yesterday. Um, Medema will have to double up effort before they can get at least a draw in any of the remaining matches. Back to haunt them as utilizing chances, as we know, is crucial if a team wants to progress in African competitions. Well, um, Medema were able to create a lot of chances against the result. Um, they scored only two. Uh, yesterday, they couldn't get clear cut chances like the, the vote in the Algerian game. But I think um, the coach will have to work on his attack so that any Little chances that will come there where they have to um, get the ball behind the net. If not, it is going to be very difficult to, to qualify from this group. You look at the other teams, they have very experienced and quality attackers. That's why they are able to get at least more goals in their in their games. The next round of matches is going to be very, very crucial and are going to be very, very tough than the previous three matches with them have played. All right, thank you, New Adams. New Adams is an Africa football expert, making us understand exactly what um, this match entails. Well, unfortunately, we have to go. Time is up. Yes. Are you sad? Well, we're so grateful <laughs> you made time to join us today. We're back tomorrow, same time. Thank you for joining us. My name is Grace Hamwa Ajeman. And my name is Godwin Asidba. Keep watching TV3. We are live on DSTV Channel 279 as well. In case you missed the bulletin, just hop on our Facebook at TV3 Ghana. Get to watch and leave your thoughts and comments. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Absolutely.